You're listening to international investment advisor Doug Goldstein on the Goldstein on Gelt Show, the financial show where we'll talk about how you can make the most of your money. With all the confusing financial chatter bombarding you each and every day, Goldstein on Gelt will give you the practical information you want and need about living a financially stable life. Here's your host, Money Maven, Doug Goldstein. Okay, we are back. We are talking to Professor Chaim Rabinovich. Professor Rabinovich has his PhD from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. He was the recipient of the American Society for, uh, for Horticulture Science Award. He has won the Rothschild Prize, and he is on the Robert H. Smith Faculty of Agriculture, Food, and Environment at the Hebrew University of Jerusalem. Professor Rabinovich, I'd like to welcome you to the show. Shalom. The question that, that uh, brings us together today is the interesting, interesting research that you are doing uh, with potatoes and the, the, the fact that you found that potatoes can be such a good energy source. So I was wondering if you could describe to us a little bit about what makes potatoes such a good energy source. Well, if I can start with a short introduction, sure. there are about 1.8 billion people, or million people, as you like, uh, which are not connected to the grid. They, are not, they don't have power running in their homes. These people use today uh, uh, kerosene lamps, uh, battery-operated uh, light. Uh, they cannot charge their cell phones, uh, laptops, and so on and so forth just because they don't have the means to do it. And this is quite bothering. We're talking about, uh, a, 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 about a, quite a big-sized population, and it's always in developing countries. We're talking about Central America, Central uh, Africa, uh, Central East, uh, uh, East South uh, Asia, and so on and so forth. Now, let me uh, start with a short story. At the Hebrew University, we um, give as a gift uh, old oil lamps that you can buy in any antique shops. And people uh, from the United States and other places are always overwhelmed by this gift because it's really an antique, and they always ask, how come you can afford such a gift? And we say, well, you go to the shop and buy it for a couple of hundred shekels and so on and so forth. I say, how come? And the reason is that when you go in Israel to any of the excavations, you find 10 of them, hundreds of them, uh, in any, every small village and certainly in big towns. And then you ask yourself why there are so many, or why, uh, so many lamps, oil lamps, in these excavations. And uh, you don't find them anywhere else, or, or not in such mass quantities anywhere else. And then it goes back to our sage, sages that used to say, Vehigadeta lebanecha, you taught your children. And uh, since the Israeli society at those times were rural society, agricultural society, or agricultural economics, they used to wake up in the morning at sunrise and go back home at sunset. And now they have the mission to teach their children. How do you do that? You need light. So you need lamps. Uh, this is not available. This is not a tradition. It's not available. Uh, it's not so popular worldwide. Now, we know from high school experiments and so on and so forth, if you, if you stick two electrodes, any uh, fruit or vegetables, it could be a lemon, it could be anything, uh, and attach lamp to it, it will, it, it will burn it, make, make light, but for a very short time. And we ask the question, can we make it more available? Can we make it uh, more extendable? Can we make, make it longer? Mm -hmm. And one of the reasons that we have selected potato is, uh, is the following. Potato can stores well for a number of months. You don't have to put it in a refrigerator to do that. Unlike tomato, unlike banana, unlike pear, unlike uh, um, any other carrot or any other vegetables. It, it stores well for a long period of time. And at the beginning, we thought, well, it has a lot of energy inside because it, it's, uh, the, the dry matter is starch, basically starch. And starch contains a lot of energy. So we thought that to begin with that we actually uh, generate power from the breaking down of the starch. We introduced the two electrodes into the potato, and yes, uh, lamp burn. We're talking about LED lamp and made light and so on and so forth. And then... Uh, uh, we were interested now in the science, not only in the, in the uh, physical phenomenon, but we were interested in the science. And we asked ourselves, okay, what happens? Uh, why does it do? Why? What do we do? And, and so on and so forth. So uh, we used a technique 
called electroporation or irreversible electroporation when you apply short pulses of electricity to a tissue and this uh, method is now being used for cancer treatment and so on and so forth without the effect of irradiation of chem or chemistry and so on and so forth. It kills, it, it breaks down the membranes, that's why it's irreversible, but it doesn't affect the chemistry of the salts. So we said let's, have, let's see what happens and what we saw is that we can um, multiply or uh, increase the power output by tenfold. So we said, wow, that's interesting because we didn't change the level of the starch. So something else is happening. And what we know today is that the potato actually serves as a medium for movement of electrons from the zinc electrode to the other side of the copper electrode. And uh, the cell walls actually are barriers. They slow down this movement. Once you break this cell walls, it facilitates, it reduces the resistance, the internal resistance of the potato and makes the current flow faster. Uh, so we said, okay, in order to break cell walls, we don't need such a sophisticated tool as, uh, as, as electroporator. We can, we can just cook them, put them in the microwave and so, so, so forth. So we did. We put them in the microwave <laughs> or on a fire in a, in a, in a beaker with, with, with hot water. Mm -hmm five minutes or ten minutes and things like that and uh, it works. It, may, it works like a magic. So boiling so the potato... Boiling the potato breaks down the cell walls, thus facilitating the, or reducing the, the internal resistance of the potato Amazing. and facilitating the movement of electron from one, electrons from one electrode to another. Now this is now accessible to everyone because even in the darkest villages in the middle of the jungle, people, people cook, people cook. They cook meat, they cook vegetables, they cook something. So if they have access to potatoes, they can just drop a potato inside the, the, this cooking pot and, 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 and take it out and use it. Now one potato we, we, we experimented uh, facilitated uh, a lamp uh, light for six weeks. From, Six sorry, weeks from one potato? One potato, slices made of one potato, mm -hmm. were enough to provide energy for LED lamp for continuous six weeks without interruption. So compared to a regular battery, how does that relate? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, uh, try try to, to have a regular battery with a lamp attached to it. Within 24 hours, it will be extinguished. Mm -hmm. And the cost is 90-fold lower. And ninety four percent me, lower? Ninety fold, not percent fold. fold. Yeah. Uh, and people ask me, well, uh, you're going to use now food in order to make energy. A, 52 weeks says that it's not six weeks, let's say that it is four weeks. So how many potatoes do we need a week in order to provide sunlight into the sh in the shucks in the middle of nowhere? Now, I had a, a contact calling me or writing me actually an email from Guatemala, they had a flood, 300 people, 300,000 people were displaced. They didn't find batteries around, but they could easily find either potato or any other organic material, cook it and, 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 and make light. Now, things that you see in the middle of nowhere, they flood, uh, you are alone or with your family and whatever, what a little light can do to improve your, your, your sure. you can charge, you can charge your cell phone with this, with this battery. <laughs> so you can make connection with the rest of the world and say, here, I am on the top of a tree or, or, or somewhere else, please come and rescue me. Okay, but you have to, of course, have zinc and copper and the wires. Is, it, is this a viable... Well, Business well, let, 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 or is this uh, just science? Well, we, we, we decided that since it, is, it won't be useful in your home or mine, but it will be useful in the developing world, we contributed free of charge. We don't do business with it. We don't charge royalties or anything like that. And we're actually awaiting any kind of charity fund like Oxfam or, or, or WHO or, or World Bank or something like that. It costs about $2 to, to, to make it. And, and uh, you don't need tools, uh, uh, and, and you asked about copper and wires. Everywhere, everywhere you go, even in the jungle, you can find wrecked cars. Mm -hmm. You go, you, you open the hood, and you find the radiator inside. The radiator is made of copper, mm -hmm. and wires are there at any number you want. So what you need is a piece of zinc. We use 9 by 5 centimeters, so it's like 4 by 2 inches. Mm -hmm. 
it cost about I don't know fifty cents. Go to any any blacksmith, <laughs> and he will cut it for you. So if you keep at home pieces of zinc, I don't know five pieces of zinc. You have light all year round. Now let me let let me, uh, unless you have a question here, I, I, I'd like to to proceed and, and tell you one additional. Okay, step. go ahead. I'm I'm ready. Go ahead. Okay. So um, before before we had this uh, instrument ready or uh, operational. Uh, we, when we still suspected that the, it is a starch that provides the energy, we thought, okay, there are potatoes with 15% dry matter, there are potatoes with 25% dry matter. Would different potatoes provide different amount of current? Mm -hmm. So we attached them with, with the electrodes and everything, and what we, in simple words, did, we measured the light profile, uh, the electricity profile. And we were astonished to see that the electricity profile varies with the variety. The amplitude is bigger, the difference is the, size, the, the distance is bigger, and the diff is different, and so on and so forth. So then we said, wait, don't we have something in our hands? I mean, we are, we are not interested in telling which variety it is by measuring the elect elect electrical output. But let's think about our body tissues. Do different body tissues have different electrical profile? And we took, uh, we, we, we joined a, an experiment that was running anyhow. We hate killing animals, so we joined an experiment running anyhow, and we measured the electrical output of a heart, of a kidney, of liver, and so on and so forth. Indeed, each and every one of them have different, has a different profile. Mm -hmm. So then we asked the question, okay, what happens if we take the same tissue, like a liver, but that has some kind of disease in it, um, <laughs> fibrosis, for instance. And doctors cannot tell, at, lo at, at least not easily, whether the, at, the, at the beginning stage, when, when the liver is completely fibrotic, then it's easy to say. But when the initial states of fibrosis begin, they cannot tell the difference. They have to take uh, uh, samples, go to the lab, uh, examine them by, by, by microscopy, and so on and so forth. I'm not a physician. I don't know what the procedures are. So we measure the electrical profile of liver with and without fibrosis. Hey, we can tell where the borders of the fibrosis is. We now want to test it on, on cancer. Now, <laughs> when, when a person is operated on cancer, what the regular procedure is, the surgeon will remove a tissue, send it to the uh, pathology and ask them to look at the borders, at the surface of the, of the, of the piece of uh, flesh to see if he, removed, he or she removed uh, the, the cancerous tissue and if the tissue at the border is completely clean. Now let's say that the results come from the pathology lab after two hours or so and say no, there are still some spots of cancer. Then he increases the size of the cut and so on and so forth until he gets the answer, now it is clean. With us, with the systems that we devise now, we think about now, you take two Chinese needles, stick them. You don't even have to open uh, mm -hmm. the abdomen. You can do it like with Chinese needle and map exactly where the cancerous tissue is and then you can attach the, the electroporator machine and kill the cells between the electrodes. But this <laughs> is a different, different project. I see. We're, we're not there yet. That is amazing. We are talking to Professor Chaim Rabinovich of the Robert H. Smith Faculty of Agriculture, Food, and Environment at the Hebrew University in Jerusalem. We're just about out of time, but Professor, perhaps you could uh, just tell people how they can learn more about what it is that you're doing and where this is going. Well, A, it was published in scientific literature, and uh, those who are interested will just Google and, and find it uh, uh, by one of the most respectable journals uh, in the field. It was cited by Nature, and so on and so forth. Uh, secondly, um, there was a communique by the, by the PR of the Hebrew University. They can contact them, and if they have any specific questions, I can give you my email address, and I'll be more than happy to respond to any question. Okay, sure. How would people contact you? Well, the, the first word is Rabin, like the murdered prime minister, R-A-B-I-N, mm -hmm. uh, at, now it goes agri, it's, uh, short of agriculture, A-G-R-I, dot, the next one is Hugi, H 
UJI for Hebrew University Jerusalem Israel dot AC for academics dot IL for Israel. Okay. Okay, Professor, once again, I'd like to thank you very much. This is fascinating, and I certainly hope that uh, you're very successful in the, in the research end and also finding ways to apply this that will both be good for business and for the medical world and for improving the, the life of the 25% of the world population that you mentioned in the beginning. It was my pleasure, and uh, thank you very much. Okay, take care now. Sure, you too. Bye. You've been listening to the Goldstein on Gelt Show with money maven Doug Goldstein. Doug's weekly radio show is heard around the world, but if you miss it, you can download the podcast at www.goldsteinongelt.com. The Goldstein on Gelt Show gives you up-to-date financial ideas so you can get on the path to financial freedom. If you'd like your questions answered on the air or off, send Doug an email to doug at profile-financial.com. It's your money for your future, so join Doug every week to build your wealth on the Goldstein on Gelt Show.